Go on then. Ask me why. Why am I carrying a glass jug on a piece of rope down the field? What do you reckon? There is a reason. Let's see if you can guess what it is before I get there. Daffodils are still not looking terribly keen about showing their heads. Not that I blame them, mind. Well, you can tell the sheep have been here for quite a bit because they have chewed this grass off fairish and it has exposed. Yeah. I don't think that's sheep poo. I was about to say that has exposed a lot of moss, but I stopped right in front of. Well, see, that's sheep poo, and that's either a very big rat, or maybe a deer. Again, answers in the box below. What do you reckon? Sheep, deer, or a giant rat? Uh, you're kind of still surviving. I haven't done an awful lot, but it's so wet then, you yeah? Poor thing's probably half drained. Oh, look, there's my antisocial sheep. All the rest of the sheep are right there, but not her. Nope. She didn't want anything to do with them. She just assumed we out here all by herself being antisocial. Oh, all of a sudden she's alone and maybe. Maybe I will join the others, just so he eats one of them instead of me. Never known a sheep like it. So have you guess what this is for you? We're heading that way. And for those of you that have been around for a while, well, that's a clue that we're heading that way with a glass jug on a bit of rope. Got it yet? Not telling. Not yet. I was too slow. It was a bunny rabbit. Great big jack rabbit. Oh, that's another one. All right, well, there's rabbits out here, okay? You would have to just take my word for it. Plenty of traffic down through here. And it's all got, well, Padded feet if it's a rabbit, but there's an awful lot of deer tracks, so we know that's also um, a deer turd. I'm suggesting that one there belongs to a munchak. Um, yeah, this video's turned into a giant deer turd, and how exciting is that? But you can see the track going through all the undergrowth here. They're busy in here. Right, guess what it is yet? Guess what I'm doing? Hmm. Okay, we have reached our destination. This is where we're heading for, and this is what this is for. All right, so this is what I'm doing with this. I am taking a look inside this jug to see if there's any life in there. And there's a good reason for that, because a friend of mine who lives about eight miles in that direction has got some frog spawn in his pond. And 
I don't have any frogs spawn in this pond and it's supposed to be a wildlife pond and I would like I would like to have a few frogs, a few newts and stuff like that. So we want to encourage wildlife. Uh, it's a bit of a risk doing it in the first year because the pond hasn't had time to mature. And to be honest, if there's nothing in there for tadpoles to eat, they're only going to eat each other and it would be, be pointless pointless exercise in introducing them so um, but I am pleased to say although I don't think the camera's going to pick it up there is quite a lot of stuff small stuff I grant you quite a lot of stuff wiggling about in there so we'll just put that back in there and I'm going to take another sample from down in there which is the well it's the deep bit that down there is probably four gotta be four foot if not four foot six deep down there if i stood in there i'd be up well above my belly button so uh yeah we'll just we'll just have another go in there shall we on sink so I'm just going to leave it down there for I don't know 30 seconds just in case something that got um, missed at the surface because obviously most of the water that went in this jug went in within a foot of the surface so um I might have a little drag around just in there and see if I can pick up some more life. Then we'll come back up and then we'll see. Well, we'll see if there's anything to see. Okay, so, well, I can see with me naked eye whether or not this camera's gonna pick it up. I really can't tell you, but. Is there enough life in there to support some frog spawn and some little froggies? Hmm. A lot of it seems to have gone to the bottom now, but they are still wriggling about, I don't know. Can you see them through there? Camera won't go in the hole. I don't think there's enough life in here to support a large population of frog spawn. But I think it's worthwhile putting a handful of spawn in there and getting it started. But I think before we do that, I need to, maybe not today, uh, spawn's not coming for a couple of weeks, Maybe I'll just find some tree branches. I've got some stuff over the back there that I can lie down <coughs> around the edge of the pond. Uh, prevailing winds kind of come up through this way. So we'll probably, I would imagine, we'll probably put the spawn up somewhere around that edge there. I'll put some sticks and everything in the, in the side to give them some protection. And, well, I think it'd be a case of watch this space. This is ideal um, habitat for frogs and amphibians, stuff like that. So we've got, got the pond. We're hoping this is going to stay wet all year round. We know that that area over there, even in the height of the summer, was always damp. Always damp. So there's no reason why, even if we get droughts, um, with the uh, damp area, the log piles which we've left, we've deliberately left those there, um, there's no reason why they shouldn't thrive here. And that's kind of what we're aiming for. Just a bit of life. You know, then perhaps my grandkids can come down, you know, in a few years' time, and they can look at the frog spawn that's actually been, you know, produced here. So and we've got a little tunnel in there. What do you reckon goes through there then? That's a fairish old tunnel. 
<sighs> Big enough for a munch, that is. Right, okay, so that was the mission. Literally just to come down and see if there was enough life in the pond in, well, it's only been six months since it's filled up, really. If there was enough life to sustain more life. Take nothing away and leave nothing behind. Right. Well, while I'm here, I happened to notice the other day when I was flying the drone over that there's another puddle up here. When I dug that pond there, I also came up and had a little poke about up here where there was a natural dip. I say a natural dip, it was where, where the people have tipped before and uh oh, I say it formed a hollow and all I did was make that hollow a bit bigger so this hmm this could actually be a better pond for the spawn than that one down there more protection possibly more life I'm gonna get me jug and we'll just dip that one a minute There's plenty of stuff floating about in there. The thing is, although I can't see an awful lot wriggling in there, um, because there is more stuff, um, that one, that pond down there is pretty barren in comparison, to be honest. But because there's more vegetation, vegetation is kind of the beginning of the food chain, you know. Some things eat plants, some things eat the things that eat plants, and some things that eat those things that eat the plants. There may be some things that eat plants and the things that eat plants as well, if you know what I mean. So, uh, I, I think I may be, maybe I'll split what we get. I don't know, if I get some spawn, we'll put some in this pond and we'll put some in that one down there. Um, whatever tadpoles are put in here, we're only gonna get a fairly small, um, fairly small percentage, I think, survive. Because I think once Mr. Heron finds this, um, and I'm sure he knows us here, I'm sure he knows us here. Once Mr. Heron finds this, he's gonna be very happy down here, picking out all my little frogs. Not much I can do about that. I mean, once they're in here, they kind of got a fend for themselves. Uh, but there is more cover in there. So by default, they kind of got probably more chance in there. Much as I want to put them in the big pond. Maybe this is the way to go. And like I said, once they're mature, they can come out and they've got all of this to hide in. Um, pretty sure there's some grass snakes in that down here so I mean it's not going to be home free there's still going to be plenty of, plenty of predators down here but you know if we get enough that survive to spawn next year and the year after whatever else and kind of build up a population I'm sure they'd find this eventually by themselves sure they would I'm just going to give them help in hand So there you are, now you know why I bought a jug on a bit of rope down the field. Pretty much nothing to do with farming at all, other than the fact of uh, giving a little bit back to the wildlife and thinking about them and, you know, not taking everything. Hmm, I wonder. 
you know, it makes you wonder, I've spent a fair bit of time and effort on creating some wildlife habitat down there for me beasties, me bugs, me wigglies, me amphibians, everything else. And as a lot of you farmers will know, the one place where you don't want to be filled up with wigglies and is usually the heaviest inhabited, shut up, is the water tank. So, just for a comparison, No, nothing has drunk out of here since well before Christmas. So it would be bailed out before the sheep came out, so don't worry. Or you could just call it Bradley Farm Lemonade. And no, I don't fit it myself. Okay, well, you know, I'm half surprised. Usually, if I did that, it'd be full of little tiny red bloodworms kicking about in there, but that's actually very little. So after all that, me thinking I was going to be clever, yeah, that's backfired, isn't it? Oh. Same old, same old.